Hi, my name is Linda Cadega. I'm an assistant editor over at the Sheet Meadow Press. I'm here today with Franz and Hogmeyer. I apologize. I'm here today with Franz Hogmeyer, and we are in the Uptown Gallery in Kingston. And I'm hosting a poetry workshop today, inspired by the glorious paintings and the art that's displayed for us today. And I was hoping, Franz, if you could tell us a little bit about the subject of these paintings. The subject of these paintings are the, is the, a flower called Queen of the Night. It, uh, that is, uh, actually, it's a cactus that blooms in the middle of the night. And usually, from what I discovered, uh, in conjunction with the moon faces, either a full moon or a new moon. Mm -hmm. And the flowers are about this big, about eight inches diameter. Wow. And uh, they bloom for about three hours, usually from nine o'clock to one o'clock or so. Along with the blooming, they emanate a, a distinct, powerful aroma that goes through the whole house. And after observing this for a number of, a number of years, I decided that I have to paint this. And of course, I cannot paint that fast in three hours, so <laughs> I usually take photographs and paint a week or so after that. Mm -hmm. First, I started with uh, realism, realistic paintings, such as this one here, that shows the flower as it is. And then, after running its course, I decided that the drama of it, the, the life and death within three hours, calls for more color and maybe more abstraction. Mm -hmm. So that's what I see here and with the, other, with the other paintings. Do you say that there's a certain emotion that you feel about this flower when it blooms every night? You said that there's a cycle of life and death in three hours. How do you use that with all these bright, exciting colors in your paintings? How do you use your emotion, your emotions to like determine your artistic choices? Well, there are things that I cannot really explain in words. Of course, that's you know, part of the mystery it just, of it. It just comes, and I, I, I do it, uh, and, and without thinking a lot, actually. Only after it, after the fact. So how, how did I do this? You know, <laughs> I question myself. Probably like the so flower thinks to itself. How did yeah, I do this in three yeah. hours? And uh, the reason I'm here actually, because I'm, I want to be able to explain this whole process mm -hmm. and my feelings. And uh, I, like, I like to write. And the reason I'm here is to... to uh, perfect the writing, maybe. Right. Poetry, like you said, deals with the omission of unnecessary words. Yes. And that's what I want to... To deal with. You to just want to... Effective, mm -hmm. effective writing, powerful mm -hmm. writing with as little, as, as few words as possible. Yeah. It's the same as in painting. Yeah. yeah. I definitely agree. I think that a lot of poetry is, or all poetry is a story. And it's the story of the self reflecting in the world. You know, whether it's self in time, yeah. self in space, yes. self in a flower, self in art. Yeah. And it's just, it's all such inspiration. Yeah. And you really want to try and capture that inspiration in your words so you can, can explain, like, the queen of the night, the glory yeah. that happens, yeah. you know, in an in instant. Yeah. It's incredible. I just, I'm so excited that you're here. I really am, because I think that you have such an amazing point of view. Like, and you can do that in poetry. Right. You can have a poem about a flower, and it's pretty, and right. it's like right. roses are red, violets are blue. Or you could have a poem about a flower, and you have no idea it's about a flower. And it's amazing, you know? It's it's something that you have to develop, much like a painting. Right. Let me just say this. Uh, years ago, I was concerned about developing my own style. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean much anymore, because uh, I, I've discarded this thought, and I just 
paint what I feel I have to paint, even going back to realism, like on this painting. I was con years ago, I was concerned about technique, and uh, that no longer matters either. Mm -hmm. I just want to create something that people react to, that, that speaks to people. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's also important in poetry. Like, it's great if you can write about what you feel, yeah. in a poem, but if you don't affect someone else, you're losing yeah, half the battle. Yeah. And I also feel that art should reflect life. Of course. And humor is part of life. Mm -hmm. So this painting here, I created so it can be turned upside down <laughs> and be called something different. Right. Something else. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's joyful. It's, yeah. you know, it has these bright yeah. half crescents of orange. Yeah. It's glorious. It's right here. It's what it is. So, when you first painted it, what direction was it? This. That direction. That direction. All right. But then I turn it around, like painters sometimes that sometimes do, mm -hmm. where 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 the balance is, color and so forth. Yeah. And I turn it around, and I thought, well, this look doesn't look bad either. No. So I called this here. Moon bloom descending like a large spaceship coming down at night. <laughs> That's excellent. That's and so I, I, I kept turning around and, and worked this way and then the, the, the opposite way until until both until both images were well enough to Yeah. To, to show. It has a great harmony and flow in yeah. both sides. And of course it's critical in poetry as well because if the entire poem doesn't flow together there's like a disjoint yeah, yeah. and it's hard to understand I think what you've done here that's really beautiful is that you've made such a cohesive unit of something that can be rearranged and right, right. seen from all angles and I think that you you do that in your sculpture as well yeah. you definitely try and make it interactive you try and make it so that people can see it from different sides. My, my sculptures, I, I try to make so that that one can look at them from all sides, like walking mm -hmm. around and uh, being interesting from, from, from all sides as you walk around. Right, and you know, it's like when you do your, um, when you paint, you're creating different shapes, yeah. even while it stays static, even though right. you can't walk around it. You can sort of notice the different curves, you can notice the different shapes when it's flipped upside down. Yeah. It's something, it's fascinating, it's very, it's amazing. I'm very grateful to be here right now. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to continuing to be inspired by your art. I hope that we get some great poetry. Yeah. And you know, I hope I can stay here for a long Thank time. You. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank Great you, Linda.